Thanks, and uh, thanks for coming, everybody. So the title of the talk is Smashing Up PyTest, Coverage Pi and AST.py to take TDD to a new level. Um, let me say just uh, quick things about me. I've been a freelance programmer since the uh, beginning of my career, like 20 years ago. A couple of times I took responsibility for the whole project and hired a few subcontractors to deliver it. I chose on one project, uh, I chose uh, Python um, for the delivery. It was in 2008 and I didn't have to touch anything else since then, fortunately. At the moment I have five Python subcontractors in one office in Bratislava, uh, working for one client on a long-term project and I'm looking for more clients. Okay, I would like, uh, I have a little survey, so survey time. So how many of you did write at least one automated test? Cool. Um, who has tests you longer than two minutes? <laughs> how about longer than 10 minutes? Okay, so some, some, some hands. <laughs> no, well, okay, eight hours. Okay, two, two hands. <laughs> um, uh, who's getting a broken build too frequently? Well, that's cool. Who's using nose? And how about PyTest? More people, okay. So, uh, these are three user interaction limits. Uh, 100 milliseconds is the limit for user to feel the system is reacting immediately. One second is the limit for user's flow of thought to stay uninterrupted, even though they no will notice the delay. And 10 seconds is the limit for users until they think the system is broken and start doing something else. Um, so computing mm, adapted, developers have done a good job in making it all quicker in recent years. There is very few activities in today's computing where you have to wait for more than 10 seconds. Um, but how about executing a test suit? It takes it takes minutes or hours. Uh, it's 50 times slower than most of the other computer tasks. It brings intensive load on the computer, uh, delays with other tasks, fans screaming. So what are the consequences? Developers hate waiting more than anybody else uh, as executing test, tests interferes with the workflow so much it's no wonder the, that under pressure or distraction some developer doesn't run the tests or doesn't notice negative results and commits a failing build which makes the lives of other developers more difficult and sometimes starts a downward spiral. Uh, broken test suit means uh, error lifespan increases. The developers valuing, using, and maintaining test suit the most are most punished and waste the most time. I actually think uh, that the test exec execution time is the single biggest flaw of automated tests idea as a whole. But how about running just affected tests? Majority of code changes are local, so it's a waste to run the whole test suit each time. There is of course a solution most of us have used. The developer thinks, I'm changing just this module, so let's just execute the related tests. However, it's quite cumbersome and unreliable. Good luck being correct in this hang picking when the dependencies uh, look like this. And also, um, um, one of the one of the properties or one of the purpose uh, purposes of uh, test suite is to discover a failure which you didn't think of uh, being able to cause with the change, right? Influencing something you wouldn't wouldn't think of. So let's explore the idea of affected and affected and unaffected tests on a very simple project comprised of one Python file. Let me have your utmost attention and please have a look at this grandiose project and try to grasp it completely. For those who, you don't, who don't know, PyTest discovers and runs any methods which are called test underscore something, uh, so this uh, constitutes a valid uh, test suite, including with the test code, with the code under test. And here we have a grid of dependencies uh, between tests and methods of particular project. Whatever you do inside the subtract method body, there is no chance you will influence test underscore add. Have a look at the source code again. You can hack all day inside subtract, 
a test underscore add is not going to be influenced. It never calls subtract for test underscore add add to start calling subtract. Any of the methods it's already calling have to change, um, which will trigger re-execution and will create an updated dependency matrix. So back to the dependency matrix, out of six positions, we have four crossed ones, so almost all of them. But on bigger projects, the ratio is going to be much smaller, so there is a lot of methods uh, that can be changed and only influence small ratio of the tests. Maybe you're suspicious about uh, how could we track the metrics in dynamic language like Python. I remember feeling the same way when, I, when hearing about coverage reporting for the first time. I thought that it would be fragile, slow, and unreliable. But no, it's very good. It's stable and widely used project. Uh, and creating a metrics on the slide is just a little addition to coverage by itself. It has the same limits. Obviously, at the moment, it doesn't work across technology stacks. You cannot track execution of C++ code or JavaScript trigger from triggered from Python. It also doesn't track uh, data, file, data file changes. If that's input of your tests and it changes the execution path, you will get wrong results. But for the circumstances where it works, uh, it works very fine. Now let me show you a tool which automatically re executes only affected tests on every file change. Three tests executed. I changed one method. Two first time tests executed. Another two. So if you want to be evil a little bit, you can join two methods with So it was a uh, screencast so that it doesn't go wrong on the presentation. <laughs> and look how it uh, went right or everything went as expected. So the idea transferred into a tool is um, Testmon or PyTest Testmon resides on testmon.org page and on GitHub. Uh, let's go briefly through the libraries which it, which it is based on. Um, coverage Pi is the giant which, uh, which allows all these after some initialization and executing of this code snippet, we get the file names and line numbers of executed code. CoveragePy is mostly used as command line reporting tool, but the features of CoveragePy, which Testmon uses, are almost documented and almost part of the API. It doesn't sound very good, but uh, really there is just a one or two undocumented uh, attributes used. And also, Matt Batchelder, who is the author of CoveragePy, reached out when we started with Testmon that uh, he would like to know. Um, if there is any obstacles and, and probably also fix, uh, fix them if the something uh, makes problems. Um, and also, Ned would like to add to CoveragePy the functionality, the feature to track which, uh, which tests or which methods are actually executing which lines. So it's ex exactly the information which we are tracking and uh, in this way it could converge or there could be a uh, joint effort. So after executing each test uh, with coverage, we are getting file names and lines of code triggered by the tests. From there we need to get methods which are executed and uh, AST from standard libraries is good, good tool to do that. That was my first contact with syntax tricks uh, when, I, when I implemented um, Testmon. From the name you can imagine what they are the syntax trees. I would say they are much more, they are not uh, much more abstract than other things in programming. So for me, the word abstract is actually quite distracting. Testmon only needs to parse uh, the Python uh, source code and understand it enough to know where the line boundaries of uh, method body are. 
So AST library is a little overkill for this, but, uh, bit, but it's ready and it works in all versions of Python, also future ones, and I was glad to learn the basics. Uh, if you would like to be, in, if you would uh, be interested in learning AST a little bit more, I'd recommend the two resources uh, mm, there to study on the slide. Obviously, uh, Testman is a PyTest uh, plugin so far. Uh, PyTest seems to have a more more uh, active community recently. Um, and also here, I was surprised to to see more hands uh, raised when you when ask about uh, about which which uh, um, test runner you use. But uh, I know I know, and I have the feeling there is a lot of projects using Gnose um, and uh, not switching anytime soon. So. I'm interested in also porting uh, test mode to, to Nose, and if uh, if anybody has experience in doing some uh, advanced stuff in Nose, uh, I would be glad to to talk and and uh, maybe I we we need help with that also. Uh, one interesting aspect of the whole project of test mode was uh, that I thought that uh, this is a valuable tool. Um, which many people could use, and it would save them a lot of time. So I asked for uh, for money uh, uh, on uh, Indiegogo, and I didn't have any followers or blog or or any other open source tools uh, I used before or uh, developed before. So uh, it was really uh, difficult to get the word out. But still, the you know the modest amount got uh, got collected. So. Uh, that was uh, that was a nice uh, and inspiring thing, and uh, I would encourage you if you have if you have done something good for the community, and have a blog or followers, and would like to dedicate your time to to do some valuable tool, tool uh, don't hesitate and and use this uh, route. Um, I think uh, mm, there will be more more of it in the future. So. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Okay, a little sneak peek into the into the future. Um, I hate the way the tests used results are presented on the console. I hate scrolling on the console and and uh, dwindling through the stack traces. Uh, so I was thinking about some better way to represent the errors. And I think the best way would be, or the best I can think of so far, would be to present the errors inside the text editor you use. Um, so something similar to, to a linter, for example. And this is a screenshot from, from uh, um, Atom. It has a very good uh, like a way, an easy way to add a linter or some code checker. And in the combination with the interactivity of, of uh, Testmon, where you get uh, and you can get the results really quickly, uh, I think uh, this is uh, this is the way for the future uh, to to make it as a linter. To of course, it's not specific to to Testmon. It th this would apply to any uh, test runner, uh, but uh, um, I think it, it in the combination of the quick feedback and uh, Good, uh, good presentation would be uh, great. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Testmon is awesome. Use it, please. Give me feedback, share, uh, tell your colleagues, and so on. This is contacts again, and it's time. We have enough time for questions, so I hope there's there is many of them. Please raise your hand if you guys have questions, and we'll get the microphone to you. Come on, don't be shy. Okay. Hello. Is there any way to force some tests to ru run all the time? Like, for example, I have a test that tests database trigger, and I want it to run all the time. 
Can I do this? Uh, not yet, not yet. It's, uh, it doesn't have many features, so, uh, so let's see how it goes. And it's also kept, uh, it's been kept uh, minimal, so that it's easy to study and to prove the concept really works. And uh, then, uh, you know, adding features is like uh, the next step. From behind. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you showed testmon running kind of as a, just a process that monitored a bunch of files, but can it also produce a, a report that I can process on my own, or does it have an API that I can use to tell me how source, co source code lines map to tests so that I could use that information myself? Um, no, not yet. I guess that's the like um, that's the addition to coverage uh, that pi I I mentioned, like because if you have some I, I don't know what would be maybe can you can you give him the microphone back what what would be the use or maybe yeah we talked about it but maybe you can talk that tell the use the UK use case I have in mind was from my lightning talk yesterday the the mutation testing right. One of the stumbling blocks for that is it takes a long time to run all the tests inside this, these loops. So if you can determine exactly the tests you want to run based on some, you know, git diff or something like that, then you can drastically reduce the, the runtime for these kinds of things and make them practical. So that would be where something like this could come in really handy for that kind of work. That's why I was wondering. I, I, I can't see how. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to envision how I could use this to <laughs> to make to make my stuff work better. Yeah. Well, I said there is not many features and there is no API, so but it's really really a small tool, so it would be easy to add any of those okay. at this point. Um, yeah, hi. Um, how do you test testmon? Good question. It has a test suit, but uh, I haven't. Uh, there is a problem in calling coverage pi recursively, right? So uh, I can have a test suite, but I cannot use the plugin itself, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. But <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there is also a solution I could on on the parts which are which rely on the coverage. Uh, the next feature would be to, to test one to add would be to uh, manually specify um, methods and tests to manually specify the, the dependency uh, so that uh, even if the tracking is lost in the recursion, uh, it would still work. Um, does it track uh, changes that you make in uh, PyDotest test fixtures as well? So if you update a fixture, will it detect that as part of? Um, well, if it's data files fixtures, if it's some JSON and like it was Django fixtures, right? Then no, that was one of the things I mentioned that it doesn't work when you know across uh, across uh, technology stacks, and it doesn't work when you have data file inputs or some inputs from external services. Uh, so ideally, you would have a test suite which constructs everything in Python code, also the fixtures. Then it's a, then it's then it's a Python code and it's tracked on the execution. Uh, could you uh, could you go back to the little example you gave with the subtraction addition stuff? Yeah. Uh, so what you did not show in the the little screencast was uh, what if the subtract method gained a call to add? How would it deal with that? So you, you add a, a new dependency basically to to one one function, right? How would it know that? Would it know that after running the test once, or when would it notice? If you add a call of add method to subtract method, yeah. right? Uh, the subtract method is called by two tests, right? So all of them would be, both of them would be um, re-executed, the test subtract and test both. Yeah, but test okay. add wouldn't be, and it's now a new dependency in subtract. It wouldn't be, and it wouldn't gain the dependency also, right? So there's a new dependency because subtract now calls add, and the. But test add doesn't call subtract. Uh, okay, got it. Okay, my fault. Thanks. Uh, also, that's a good remark. Like uh, we've been using the test on the on the 
Well, no, we project and most of the bug reports have been like this, uh, fortunately. So, <laughs> so we found out that Tesmon is right, which which is quite uh, quite a good surprise because uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, yeah, I, I also was afraid that it's going to be fragile and and stuff. But the biggest problem actually uh, is that uh, tests are dependent in dependent even if you don't know about it. There, there is some fixtures which you know that doesn't get reinitialized or something like that. So then you get failures because testmon you know always runs some other dynamic subset of your test suite which doesn't happen in many in any other circumstances. So so that's like the biggest problem in adopting. Okay, next question. Okay, if my uh, test calls a helper function, sorry. If my test calls a helper function. And the helper function changes, will it notice? Yeah. Because it's yeah. A part of the tree? Yes. <laughs> no, it's not uh, part of the tree, it's part of the execution. I, well, the, the syntax tree or the AST parsing is only used um, at the end of the whole analysis, and it's not that important. The, the important thing here is that when you run the test, uh, and you, the test uh, calls the helper function, it's in the list of executed lines and executed methods and of, the, of that test. Of, on the, it's in the dependency matrix, it will appear as a dependency. So that probably answers Floris's question, which was about PyTest fixtures, not about uh, data files. About text files? PyTest fixtures. Okay. In other words, it was a question about staying in the Python world, not a question about JSON fixtures. Yeah, it, it, that, that answers the question. Yeah, so Pytex features are, are created by a method, or, right? So, so it's going to get tracked. Um, does it, how does it restart the test runner? As in, it, does it restart the entire process, or does it? Sorry, could, could you talk slowly? Because um, Testmon is implemented as a PyTorch test plugin, right? Um, so how does it restart the test run when it tries to run new tests? As in, how does it affect uh, session scoped fixtures, or do you restart the entire process, or exactly how does that work? Um, well, I, uh, I'm not sure about the session session scoped uh, fixtures. Uh, it really depends on the changes. Um, or are you asking about the runtime itself? Like, I can uh, about. About the fixtures set up and tear down, basically. So a after it's run a couple of tests, will it tear down all the fixtures and restart them again next test, or does it? I'm not sure. This might be mm, well not tested yet. I'm not sure how it would behave. So the a session fixture is, you know, always run. If I understand correctly, always run just once in, uh, in the beginning of the test execution, right? Um, and if you change anything in there. That probably that's not tracked because the specific uh, test um, doesn't execute any of the session fixture, right? So that wouldn't wouldn't get caught, wouldn't get uh, um, registered as a, as a dependency. Uh, do I understand correctly that uh, if a function does something nasty, for example, change some global value, and other function depends on it, on this global value, uh, so we kind of can, can break the function which we haven't edited, and uh, we the tests will not run for the the other function for the old one. It, this is quite difficult to explain, but um, you know, if that evil function uh, changes some global value, it will appear in the dependency matrix. Either it's called by a test or it's not. For every single test, you can say that. And for the tests which do not call the function, it doesn't matter what the evil function do. You know? The world can explode in that function but the tests are not executed. Uh, the tests do not execute it. Mm, so, yeah, for I example, if, if my function depends on the on state, the function, function A depends on the state, and then 
I have function b that starts to modify this state and makes in runtime makes my original function break. How? Well, test either manual. either this is a test dependency, right? Because um, the evil function gets called in test one, and then the test two relies on that on that uh, on that global value. So that's what I called test dependency, and I talked about that would be a problem. But uh, if there is, you know, if if the tests are independent, and the test two doesn't rely on that value and resets it again, or doesn't use the value, it doesn't matter. It gets registered, or or it it works as it should. Okay. Seems to be it. Thanks. <laughs>